Hey everybody, this is David from Top Shelf Aquatics and welcome back to our Coral Care series. Today we're going to be talking about the care requirements for two of the most well-known soft corals kept in the world of reef aquariums, zoanthids and palithoa. Zoanthids and palithoa are arguably one of the easiest and most popular coral species to keep. Loved by collectors and hobbyists of all experience levels due to their endless varieties of colors and patterns. Commonly referred to as zoas and pallies, they are both considered colonial type corals, growing into large colonies. Typically, zoas are more sought after and desired by hobbyists as they tend to exhibit more eccentric patterns and coloration in comparison to palithoa. Zoanthids tend to have a smaller polyp size, while palithoa tend to display a larger polyp. Of course, this is not always the case, but generally speaking, provide your zoas and pallies with low to moderate flow. This prevents a buildup of debris within the colony, preventing possible bacterial infections. We recommend placing new frags at the bottom of your aquarium in a low light area to give them time to adjust to your system. If the frag needs more light, the stock will begin to stretch for that light. Zoas and pallies tolerate an array of aquarium environments as far as water chemistry, but tend to thrive in slightly more nutrient rich environments. The biggest key to keeping zoas and pallies happy is stability. A happy and healthy colony will have a tight mass of tissue that connects to individual polyps as opposed to blotchy intermediate runners connecting the individual polyps, producing small new polyps that surround the main polyp or colony. Zoanthids and pallies exhibit a passive type of feeding style. Zoas and pallies rely on light for the majority of their nutritional needs, but benefit from regular dosing of amino acids and liquid foods like fuel and phytoplankton. Let's get serious for a minute. The most important thing to note about these corals, mainly pallies, is that they both contain a toxin called palytoxin. While palytoxin poisoning cases are extremely rare, always take precautions when handling these animals. The easiest way to avoid palytoxin exposure is by education and practicing proper safety precautions. Glove and eye protection are highly encouraged when handling, fragging, and removing them from the water. Do not, under any circumstance, scrub, dip, boil rocks or frag plugs with existing zoanthids or palithoa polyps. This can irritate the polyp and potentially cause them to release the palitoxin. The toxin can potentially become airborne, exposing you and anyone within the vicinity. Take the proper safety precautions and you should have no worries when it comes to palitoxin exposure. In a few words, zoanthids and palithoa are fun, easy corals to keep that come in an endless variety of colors and patterns. They are one of the few corals that are sought after by both beginner and advanced hobbyists alike. While zoas and pallies may be small, don't underestimate their ability to bring that pop of color and the natural reef aesthetic to your aquarium. Thank you for joining our Top Shelf Aquatics Coral Care Series. I'm David and we'll see you again in the next episode. Hey, if you enjoyed content like this, be sure to check out the rest of our Coral Care videos. And as always, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram.